Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing well. I am doing a distance energy healing and psychic wisdom session for a client. I'm gonna read their goals here shortly. I wanna thank the client so much for the opportunity to connect with you today. And thank you so much for sharing with us here on YouTube. We really appreciate it. A lot of other people are gonna appreciate it. These are some intense goals and I'm excited to see what's going on deep down inside because I definitely want you to achieve this. <laughs> okay, before we start, if any of you are interested in working with me, go visit my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. You can book a session out there. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. All right, so these are your goals. You say, I want to feel like myself again. I'm not happy. I'm trying to be but I'm struggling with it. I feel my soul is lost at times. Maybe I need soul retrieval work. I want to feel happy and alive. Maybe feel influential in a good way, like I add meaning to the world. I hope this makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so you want to feel like yourself again. And yourself is somebody who is happy and you're struggling with feeling sad. You feel like your soul is lost and you're wanting to turn this around. You want to turn this around to feel like yourself. And yourself is somebody who adds meaning to the world. Somebody who is happy and adds meaning to the world. Okay. Yeah, let's see what's going on in there. Hmm. I'm just digesting this here. <sighs> okay, this is really strange. It seems like uh, there's a lot of images hitting me. Okay, there's an invisible scalpel and it basically slices down your face and the front of you and it was stitched up and they didn't do a very good job of stitching it. And you have this very weird, um, I mean, that's kind of cinched skin that goes all the way down you. You also are a flower that um, has been sewn shut. So the flower doesn't open. So there's pain involved with this. And there's also a visible scar that can't heal properly. And it's pretty disturbing, to be honest, because there's something festering beneath this. It's not been healed properly. Like, there's what what is the energy of an infection, okay? And it looks like when I start to kind of uh, open this up, there is a gross, glossy eyeball underneath. And it seems like m multiple, very large, gross, glossy eyeballs. And they are in your face, your throat, your chest, okay? It's like you could say there's four big ones that kind of make up specific sections of your body. But honestly, it looks more like two really huge eyeballs. I feel like there's more eyeballs than two, though. I feel like there's more than two. I feel like there could be hundreds even. And sometimes when we are down in the dumps energetically, we can attract things. <laughs> so let's say a basement that is getting water in it can attract mold, right? It's like an inevitable thing. Let's say you're going out and it's winter time and you're not wearing your hat and your gloves, you can attract um, a challenged immune system. Okay, so when um, the circumstances are right, we can attract things into our energy field. And these eyeball things look like um, kind of like energy parasites, okay? So, and they're attracted to something that has not healed properly in your life, okay? And it covers your face, it covers your voice, it covers your heart, it covers your, like, your emotions, your sexual body, your roots, okay? It covers these places. Like, it really covers you. It, it covers you. You're totally lost. 
you you say that you're lost but man you're totally lost because <sighs> i see you would you will give up your body to these eyeballs and you will just wander and why would you do that because you don't matter is that what this is you want to be seen but nobody sees you or you don't matter Okay, let's say that's true. Let's let's say that you don't matter and nobody sees you. There's a really gross, uh, mean version of yourself that's here. And this mean version is saying that you're... It's putting you down. It's saying that you're... All these negative names, okay? And shows me your bruised banana that nobody wants. You're useless. Like, you're a gross banana. Nobody is going to peel you. Nobody's going to enjoy your banana fruit. Uh, people don't want you. Um, you should be thrown away. It's a lot of negative um, self-talk, okay? Hmm, i got to really think about this here. I can't just... Um say that that's not true. I can't, that doesn't work. Um, it's almost like I have to say that you are exactly as you see yourself. It's almost like it's, it's odd how the energy flows when I say, okay, then that's true. You are a gross banana. You should be thrown away. It's almost like that's... Yes. Thank you for acknowledging what's true. Thank you for being honest with me. It's strange because you, what, what makes you feel like you thrive is a negative opinion about you. Like if you received a negative opinion about you, that would make you thrive for some reason. But yet it's the one thing that's breaking you down. So one thing that makes you just not even want to return to your body. It's one thing that creates this infection, you know? It's, I mean, it's a fun little riddle. <laughs> That's what that is. I, I have a feeling that this, we're, we're, this needs, we need to go pretty deep here on this. I, all right, I'm going to look at these eyeballs. I'm really grossed out by them. It's going to turn people away from you, by the way. These eyeballs are actually... Is that what you want? Perhaps you want people to turn away from you. Because every time I look at these eyeballs, I'm just like, ooh, I don't... I feel repelled. I feel um, not inspired to know anything about them. Just let them do their thing. You want to be a gross banana? Okay. I'm just going to let you do your thing. Um, I'll let you just wander. Um, I'm going to agree with everything so you can feel better about yourself. Isn't that kind of strange? So I'm going to have to override your energy. And I'm going to have to do an opposing thing here. Oh. No wonder. These eyeballs are too... Um, these eyeballs... This is horrible. This is absolutely horrible. I go into one of these eyeballs and I don't know really what's happening, but something extremely inappropriate is happening. Something very violating is happening. It's so violating and so confusing that... There's no way this could be real. It feels like um, inappropriate touch, to be honest. It feels like an ability to speak about what really is upsetting you inside. It feels like you can't talk to anybody at all. I'm just going to continue to look at this because it makes you feel absolutely 
like your stomach is turned and you want to just put the eyeball back and just forget about it. And no, we're not going to. I hear the word abuse in here. And I see a gross man who is zi unzipping and zipping um, a zipper. And when he unzips his zipper, there's eyeballs in there. And then he zips his zipper. And nobody sees what goes on when we unzip the zipper. This is really, really bad. I feel like my crown chakra is shattering and I feel like my stomach um, is made out of sickness, like that you can't even vomit out of your system. You're just gonna have to sit with this. It's like whatever you could put your hand in a garbage disposal and take out some gross old freaking lettuce or something and just eat it. It's just sick, it's just sick. And I feel like that there's no way that we can solve this. That's how this feels. Nothing. I, I tell you that you're powerful. So I want you to decide what do you want in your life and what do you not want in your life. What do you want in your life and what do you not want in your life? So it's going to simplify things for you when you can decide that I want this and I do not want this. And when you can decide that you have your own eyeballs that see, you have your own voice that speaks, you have your own heart that sings, you have your own emotions, and that to repair you is going to require you to be powerful in yourself. Powerful in yourself. Where did this come from? I mean, we're talking about an elephant sitting on your chest, sitting on your stomach. An elephant. We're talking about the weight of a world sitting upon your chest. Like... Okay, so we're going to try to move through this, okay? I don't know what to say because you're changing your appearance, but you don't look healthy at all. I don't know if this is an improvement or it's just the next layer of this because this wound is open and you look kind of... I guess technological in a way. I mean, you glow with a blue light. It doesn't look like technology light, but it, it kind of represents somehow technology. And you're trying to seal the wound with technology. Actually, it gives you... It's some, some kind of support for you. All right, I'm supposed to go to your sacral chakra next. Um, it's actually full of cartoons and funny faces and funny personalities and funny jokes. And it's full of very nice people, actually, um, shaking hands and saying hello. It's full of, um, there's a construction worker, there's a, um, it's very nice people that do d different jobs in the community. It's basically like there's a fireman, there's a construction worker, there's a police officer. It seems like men um, that play a specific role in society that do good things in society, that build societies basically that that um, keep balance to societies like it's good people okay and it's specific specifically men okay um, specifically male roles in society that you would commonly see a man in uh, doing construction you would commonly see that that's because it just is what it is like you just see that and you you value it's kind of like 
there's the iconic man working the iconic male job and he's smiling and he's helpful. He's a good citizen. He's a good person. And um, you value, it's, it's like you value somebody who, who represents something of strength and goodness in this world. Is that why you want to find out how you could be a good influence? Like you want to make a, an influence in the world. Like you could be one of these good people. And it's not just about, it takes a lot more than just a, um, to do construction. I mean, that's hard work. That's every day. That's um, strengthening your body. That's uh, the test of time. I mean, essence, that's developing an intelligence about how to even build things, you know? And so there is something... Um, so respectable about that so absolutely respectable about that it's not just a picture in a book though it's a life story and so a life story carries a lot more weight than just a picture in a book you know i feel like this is um very basic to me and I'm going to go deeper than this. You're not, um, you're not, um, pushing me away from that, by the way. And that's a good thing. I mean, based upon that eyeball and what we saw, um, this is surprising that, uh, your sacral chakra is not revealing any kind of shame or anything right now. Now, where did that come from? Where is that eyeball? Because that is desecrating. Okay. You need to cry. You need to feel some kind of, you need to give in to feeling despair in a way. It's almost like you're trying to be a, a strong, a smiling man, but you, you're you holding the page and the image, but the story is broken. And you don't want that to be true. And you don't want to feel despair at all. But you need to be honest here with your emotions because this there's definite despair here. I'm going to see that you are giving in and you are crying profusely and you're hurting and it's okay to be angry. I mean, we're human beings. We, we feel and through feelings, we live, we exist, we have meaning. There's nothing wrong with anger, nothing wrong with, especially when you're giving in to it's just, you're avoiding your feelings is not solving them allowing yourself to be whatever kind of baby you need to be to get through this is genuine this is actually a genuine moment of emotion it's not not putting on an act in order to get the right kind of attention it's actually feel this way There's, uh, there's a lot more breathability now, I will say. I feel like we're, there's so much deeper we can go here, but there seems to be a strange eel swimming around in your face. That's what it's like. These eyeballs are kind of a growth and development. So, I mean, they're, they're, I can't just pluck them out, bam, done. It's not like a, um, I'm walking into space where it's full of these things. Um, I think it as where I thought maybe there's hundreds of them. It's I'm it seems to me few okay that are kind of growing big into big eyeball problems, big things that you've seen that aren't going away. I'm just going to be honest with you. 
because we're, 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 there's more breathability, there's more fresh air, but there's still the, there's still the sense of a big problem. Okay. So what we're, I'm just going to be honest with you and we're, I'm just going to look at the eyeballs again and I'm just going to talk to you about how they make me feel right now. I say, I want them to go away. They won't go away. I want, I want them to not be there, but they're still there. No wonder you, you stitched this up so the eyeballs would close. Like you stitched over them, but you didn't heal what they saw. I'm going to ask God, what did we do to help you here with this? God tells you... Okay, the part of your session is about speaking from a place of honesty. That you you must always speak from a place of honesty. Always speak from a place of honesty. Always speak from a place of honesty and that will help you bring yourself back to yourself. You aren't lost at all, actually. You just need to decide when to speak and when not to speak, so to speak. But remember that honesty will compel you and propel you. It is your forward motion. It is who you are. It is who these smiling men represent is good, honest people. There's something about um, that is meaning good, honest people are meaningful people. And you want to represent a good, honest, meaningful person. You're buried under a bunch of basically nuts that fell out of a tree. And uh, you're trying to find your way out and your hands are kind of flailing out of this mound of nuts. I'm trying to pull you out, but you keep acting like um, you're deep in this. <laughs> and I'm like, no, you're not really. Here, take my hand. Let me help you out. But it's something you're attached to that you can't get it out of your eyes, out of your mind. And you're hiding it with all these nuts, but saying that, oh, whoops, oh, look at the tree just lodged a bunch of nuts and now I'm stuck in these nuts. No, you're not actually choosing to, to, to keep your eyes open in a hidden place. This makes your stomach feel sick again. It makes you feel sick to your stomach. It makes you feel like crying. I say, let's go deeper into what you're not letting go of here. You like that it's hidden, that's for sure, but uh, we're gonna sh move the nuts out of the way. We're gonna shine the light on it. And the light is full of angelic support, okay? It's full of love. It's full of Mother Mary and Jesus and Christ consciousness, okay? It's full of genuine good honest people okay it doesn't get more good and honest than jesus okay mother mary they're like the purest of them all okay they have very pure energies and they're here to support you too we all need help you know it seems to me like you created an alternative sacral chakra there's your your day-to-day -day one, and then there's your hidden one. And this is very, very nerve-wracking for your emotions. Your emotions feel like they can't, they're they just, just absolutely, you can't breathe. You're hi hyperventilating right now. And you're, you're trying to close your eyes and stitch them closed. And I say no. That's not how this works. Trust me, I don't want I don't want you to, I don't want any of this to be real for you. But this this is how we mend this thing is we look at it. We have to look at it 
Don't close your eyes. You must open your eyes and look at it. You understand me? It's like some things you just don't want to look at. Some things you just don't want to see. But we're talking about honesty, right? So if there's something honest in this, then we need to look at it. So honesty is the solution. Honesty is the key here. Honesty. It's going to help you be who you are, too. It's going to empower you. Sharing to scream. And it seems to me like somebody is cutting your genitalia with a razor blade off. Like cutting it off. Slicing you, it's gutting you basically. It's making your head really cold and it's making your head hot at the same time. It's making your stomach feel like it's going to puke. It's making you feel ill. And you're scared and you're shaking. I ask you to just tell me what you you see. I just want to. I want you to tell me what you see, and you don't have to tell me in like a practical way. You can tell me in like a creative way, like a cartoon character way. You say you don't want to tell me in any way. <laughs> okay. Well, that's the first thing. You just told me in some way. You said that you didn't want to tell me it in any way. So you've already said something about it. So what you see makes you not want to tell me about it in any way. Any kind of way. So you're already telling me something. So thank you. Thank you for giving that to me. You start a... Huh... Man, I mean, this feels like I could faint. There's something strange, like an old typewriter. There's um, clicking at the keys, the uh, click clacketing, and there's a piece of paper, and the piece of paper is typing, and it says, um, I don't want to tell you anything in like caps lock exclamation point, okay? And then there's like an angry face emoji. So then I bring that out of your mouth. And you sound like a, what, what is it? Like um, peanuts? The, what's the mother sound like? Wah, 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 wah. You, you sound like that when you speak. Somehow this already is making you feel better. I see ocean waves. I see uh, a, a young, handsome man um, on the beach. I see the surfboard. I see the silence of basically the nature speaking to you, basically. And it's in a silent way, but a way that reaches your soul. I feel like you, you come from the soul and not just the heart. You come from the soul. And when you have to translate this human world and the things that can happen in this human world and you have to translate that, how do you, you, you are someone who comes from the soul and there's something um, so pure about that. Why you must be attracted to a genuine, good, honest person and wanting to be that too because that's who you are. So you will have to do things in your life where you, you will have to s speak about things, okay, that don't feel refreshing at all. 
make you feel hot and cold in your head like you're gonna faint and vomit at the same time and nothing comes out and the gross never goes away you're gonna have to speak in order to get your power back in order for you to conquer that gross you have to speak by the way you're gonna have to speak and maybe there's uh, someone you can talk to is somebody you can talk to Maybe there's um, someone you can type to. Maybe there's a way to squeak out some words and ask for help. Like you did here with the session. But this is what God is asking of you to remember is about honesty will empower you. Because you can only speak the truth unless you choose not to, but... Don't worry about what other people say. Just say what you say. Say what your truth is. You come from the soul. So literally what you speak is of the voice of your soul. And I can't think of a more powerful voice than that. You know what I mean? You would rather, it's like, be in silence in a peaceful beach than hold anyone, I suppose, accountable for injustice it seems like but what if the injustice is done to you and you can't live your life until you speak about injustice maybe you have to do that and that's wronging but it's not wronging it was wrong what had happened to you was wrong I will say the major improvement on these eyeballs and in this wound here, major improvement even in your emotions, it's a remembering, remembering who you are. It's bringing your energy back to yourself. You're not lost, by the way. You're not lost at all. In fact, you're quite um, clear. But you got to give yourself permission to own that clarity. And it's through the gift of, of honesty it's like, you know, Mother Mary, Jesus are, are they, they're very meaningful symbols. They're meaningful representations of, of Christ conscious, of goodness, of, of, I guess you could say, even um, most genuine way to express um, a personal um, gift of life to help others, you know? It's even a sacrifice to help people in this way. Because you have to be the meaning that we are moving towards in a world that doesn't want to move towards that kind of meaning, it threatens it to do better than this. So you might have to be the one to be the threat and ask for better of, of someone else than their behavior. So you're literally a reckoning of, of Jesus. Uh, and it's like this, this sin. It's like you, there's a sin here. And the sin has to be accounted for. And you... I feel so sad right now. All right. I know you know what I mean. I'm going to just touch your heart. I feel compelled to do that. Just touch your heart with light. Give you breath. You're, one thing I, I will say is there is major improvements for the heaviness of what we've stepped into here. And that is shocking to me. Because it tells me that you have the ability, you have the power to overcome this. You have major ability to overcome this. I don't see that you need to be flushed down the toilet of this experience, but it could feel like that right now. But I see progress here. The fact that I see progress um, and improvement and uh, transformation is a sign that you're going to get through this, okay? And telling you you're not alone, you're never alone, and you need to speak. And thank you for everything that you shared with me. And I'm hugging you because this is hard. It 
it's just, okay. There, there's one more thing. As I hug you, there's a rat in your heart. And I grab it by the tail and it's a big fat rat and I pull it out. And I start to see that you're surrounded by big fat rats everywhere and they're sque squeaking and scurrying all over the place. Like there's thousands of them climbing up the walls on the ceiling and the floor all over you. There's just like rats everywhere. And you don't know how to clean up this mess. You don't know how to clean it up. And you feel overwhelmed by this. You feel responsible and you feel overwhelmed and you can't do anything to clean up these rats. I say, what can you do? You say, I can do nothing. I can't even remove one rat. Okay, then you can't remove any rats at all. I mean, you're, on, you're being honest right now. You genuinely cannot do anything. And because you're being so honest about what you can't do, because you genuinely can't do it, the rat is starting to disappear a little bit. And it seemed like acknowledging that was the first step to cleaning this up. Because whatever this is seems like way too big and you'll never be able to achieve it, and that's not true. So why don't we just pick up one rat and then where do we want to put it? The rat actually looks way worse than a natural rat. It, it looks horrifying, like a demonic rat. And it looks like a bruised banana as well. It looks disgusting and it oozes into your hand. And you cl clutch it even tighter and you say, I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to get rid of you. But then you don't have anywhere to place it. You can't throw it in a trash can or you can't take it outside. You, ca you just you can't do anything with it. You actually choose to swallow it down. And I'm kind of like, eh, wow, really? Okay. You say, I just have to keep swallowing these down until there's none left. I just have to keep swallowing them down until there's none left. And then... You can, like hold your nose and then oh, put, put another one in your mouth and you just keep consuming, consuming, consuming until there's no rats running around out there. Still there's like three or four. Every time you touch one, it turns into a gross like burnt friggin' butter. It's like black peely ju juicy butter slash gross bruised banana squish um, slash gross gooey demonic rat, okay? And you say, if I just keep eating them, I'll, I'll just get used to it and then it won't bother me so much. And that's one way I can clean up this mess, just by eating it all. Oh, no, 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 no. That's, that's not quite right. You represent desperate. You represent you'll do anything to make it go away. You represent I'm going to find a way to um, become used to what I don't like so that I can tolerate it better. No, none of this stuff is good. Don't ever um, train yourself to become used to something in intolerable that is actually harming you. Uh, because you, you shouldn't let, don't let yourself be harmed, okay? Like that. Don't become used to it so you just become numb. I make you barf all those back out. No. Uh-uh. Thank you for showing me that, by the way. We need to do something about this. Somehow, though, they're me pushing them out of you. Actually, they're just kind of dead rats everywhere. And they're lifeless. And there's a few other faces and they're sad, but they're cleaning up this mess and they turn into poop basically like, like dog poop or something. Um, and it, there's just like a broom and, a, like a scoop here. So we're just uh, cleaning all this poop up. Okay. And you say, okay, that's better. That's better. And you thank these two that came to help you. 
they're just like um they represent also kind of sad faces that are that that's 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 the best they can do as a helping hand they're worn out and tired just like you are But you feel a new spirit, a new hopefulness, a new light um, developing in your heart. And something feels a lot cleaner inside yourself and a lot more put together. And you need time to reflect on this. That's what you say about those eyeballs. You say that you don't... They're not necessarily representing a parasite, energetic parasite. It's more so a growth of something you saw or something that you're, it's about sight and it's about how we see things and how we digest the meaning of what we see and how it impacts our identity, how it impacts our feelings, how it impacts our voice, how it impacts our, um, our personal power. And so it's been hard. You just try to seal up those eyeballs and just keep going, but you need time to open those eyes and let the gross be looked at without vulnerability even speak however you can speak about it because that's actually how we truly clean up this mess and it seems like there's a few helping hands on some level but your voice can be quite powerful and you need to find out how to put that voice into your own effort of of doing good for mankind right all right. Yeah, thank you for this. I mean, it's just like Forrest Gump. Like, you know, the box of chocolates, you never know what you're going to get because there's so many of us that we want to find ourselves for our light and we want to feel alive again. And the things that are the loudest beneath the surface of that request for you is what I walked into. And so... All we can do is look at it, describe it, process it, think about it, reflect on it, and then we take the next step. But I feel like you're on your way to finding out who you are and finding out a, a strength in you. All right. Thank you so much again. And thank you, everybody, for your love and support. I hope you all have a great day.